tutorial on basically staying in shape, getting in shape. This is a cardiovascular workout that also will uh, have elements of strength training in it as well as uh, you can, it can become a power training drill or speed strength training drill. It can also be a, a speed drill as well, depending on where you and what you emphasize and how you emphasize the workout. So for those of you who are competitive athletes, uh, this is a really good drill to use um, in your downtime to stay in shape while you are basically um, self-isolating. Um, there isn't too much you need for this workout. As a matter of fact, you can get away without using anything at all if you don't have access to any type of equipment. But what can be beneficial to you for this workout is a jump rope or skipping rope, um, some hand weights, and an exercise mat or some kind of um, surface that is comfortable for you to do uh, calisthenics on. Um, if you don't have hand weights, you can, if you wish, you can use uh, two small two pet bottles and fill that with some sand or water, and that will add that will give you some kind of weight you can use in your hand. Um, and if you don't have a jump rope. Uh, a certified jump rope, then you can go get a piece of clothes lining if you have and uh, maybe put two pieces of PVC on the end of the jump rope and failing that, if you have nothing at all you can make a jump rope with, you can just simulate the motion of the jumping rope. Okay, so this is a workout we use for our athletes a lot when they're getting prepared for competition. It's done in sets and uh, you want to get, as an athlete, uh, amateur athlete, you want to get up to doing about, uh, at least three sets and if you're a professional, you then ideally you want to get up to doing a minimum of five sets. Each set, um, in each initial set has three rounds, three three minute rounds, the length duration of a match and the last set has a fourth round which ends with shadow boxing. So each set three rounds, the first round of the set you skip for three minutes, the second round you shadow box for three minutes, and the third round you do calisthenics um, interval training, six 30 second intervals of calisthenics for that third round. Okay, um, between each round you have a one minute rest period, and between each set you rest for three minutes. And that's how that's how you do your workout. So you want to be creative in your workout. You want to be challenge. You want to challenge yourself in your workout. Uh, what I like to say is that you want to maintain um, uh, intensity level, the same intensity level or higher that you did in your first set. So as you do your exercise, and this is, you can actually record your progress. Um, have someone write. Uh, make notes first. For example, when you're doing the calisthenic portion of it, how many push-ups did I do in 30 seconds? How many uh, how many burpees did I do in that 30 second period? And that will determine um, when then your goal is to try to, ex to uh, achieve that level again or exceed that level. So let's say in the first set um, of calisthenics, I did 18 push-ups in 30 seconds. Then in the next um, in the next set, I want to do at least 18, but maybe I can get up to 20, and so on and so on for each round going up. I want to try to increase. The idea is you want to be able to maintain your performance level or your intensity level in the fight in the last round, just as you would have done in the first round. You don't want you don't want to deteriorate in performance as the rounds go on. If anything, you want to improve in your performance as the rounds go on. So you want to challenge and push yourself so that you're, get, you're at least maintaining the same level of intensity in your performance. Now, there are several things to do to make this as beneficial for you as possible. So let's just break this down. Each set is three rounds with a one minute break in between. So basically this is an amateur bout. It's structured um, as an amateur bout would be structured where you're comp 
competing for nine minutes, you get two minutes rest within that nine minute within that uh, period. So a total of eleven minutes um, of perform uh, performance. Three minutes, rest a minute. Three minutes, rest a minute. Three minutes. Um, so that's the first thing. So you are reflecting what a match would normally be. So during your performance there, you want to try to maintain the intensity and train yourself and push yourself in the same way you would if you were actually in the ring competing against an opponent. So with that in mind, you want to, in some cases, um, work through periods of, uh, of a consistent pace, but then you also want to work through periods of acceleration where you actually increase your intensity and go for for, for, for short bursts of activity and then you want to go at some periods where you're performing at the same level because that, that's the nature of a fight. Sometimes you're going to be moving around and just moving and nothing's happening and then <laughs> you explode and then you move around and you explode. So you want to maintain that concept particularly in the shallow boxing and in the skipping. So when you're skipping, yes, you want to have a pace, you want to pace um, in the skipping but during that process of skipping as well, you also want to speed up and accelerate um, in there as well. And the same thing with the shadow boxing, you can be nice and smooth and consistent in the shadow boxing, but <laughs> there are times you want to really pick up the, the intensity and really blitz um, in between your workout. Okay, so um, I'm just going to take you through stage, stages and concepts that you can use even within this workout. So as Structured as this this workout is, there are lots of variables that you can add to it to make it challenging, to make it more productive for the objective you have in mind. So let's start with the skipping first. When you skip, there are a couple of things you can do in your skipping. One, you can again skip. Uh, pace skip where you're maintaining a consistent pace as you skip and just building your coordination and, and your timing and your rhythm but you can also increase the another way you can also do burst where you increase the intensity in the skipping you can also work uh, different patterns of movement with the feet to develop coordination uh, that's another way you can do it and then you can also add variables and emotions of the skipping rope so for example, let's start with pace. If I'm starting, I can just start with a pace skip. Just maintaining a consistent pace and moving. But then I can work on increasing the intensity of my skip where I blitz and really move quickly with the skipping and then I can go back to pace. So pace skip. Um, so that's one. Well, that's two. So I can pace skip, I can increase the intensity of my skipping. I can also play with my footwork. So I can skip both feet moving up and down together. I can skip on one foot. I can skip on the other foot. I can also make feet. I can pick my knees up. I can go into fighting position as I skip. I can switch feet as I skip. And I can even practice my knee strikes a bit from this angle. I can even work on working my knee strikes in. Sorry. Hit the roll. I can practice my knee, my knee motion. That requires a bit more coordination. You have to get the rhythm going. Then I can work on. My knee, move, my skip knee motion. Okay. As I skip, I can also play with my hand motions. So I can do my standard skip thing here, but then I can start crossing. I can cross and keep skipping in the cross position. And then sometimes when the rope sags and you mess up. That's in the rope sides here. I can keep the rope moving and skip. One thing I personally like to do as I'm skipping 
is never to stop my feet moving. So even if I'm skipping and I make a mistake and the rope, and the rope snags on my feet, I keep my feet moving and then I go back into my skipping again. If I mess up, I keep my feet moving and I go back to skipping again. So those are just some variations and variables you can add to the process of skipping so that you're challenging yourself, you're being creative, and you're working your coordination, you're working building up your, your cardiovascular fitness as well. Okay, so those are things to consider as you're doing the skipping portion of this workout. Now, in terms of your shadow boxing, depending on your sport, if you're a boxer, then your shadow boxing will focus just on using your hands, punching, and working on your boxing skills. So all your rounds will be just focusing on the punching. If, however, you're a kickboxer, then you have punching to look at, you have kicking to look at, and then you have blending the feet and the hands together. So you have a couple of ways you can approach doing your workout as far as the shadow boxing is concerned in terms of how you structure your rounds. And if you're doing a discipline like Muay Thai or MMA, then you have even more things to consider because you have the elbow strikes, you have the knee strikes if you're doing Muay Thai. Um, if you're doing uh, MMA, then you have also the grappling component to think about. Okay? Although, if you are doing MMA, then your rounds are going to be five minute rounds and not three minute rounds. <laughs> Alright, so you'll be doing three five minute rounds as opposed to five three minute rounds. Right? Okay? Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, if you're a boxer, you just can shadow box all your tools. Or you can say, well, you know what? First round, I'm going to focus on fighting on the outside. So I'm going to use my long technique, my jab, my cross and step, hit and move and stay on the outside. Round two, I'm going to work on the inside. So I'm going to focus on getting in and working the body. And working on my punches to keep my opponent in place and so you can't I cut the ring off on my opponent and then round three you put it all together so that's another way to look at it so you can go three straight rounds where you're just all free or you can say well, that you know what I want to work on this specific skill okay or sometimes it can be I want to work on this specific technique okay or combination so maybe round one I want to work on jab, slip, hook to the body, button weave, hook cross when my opponent comes at me. And that's what I focus on. It's not all I do in the round. I still do everything else. I move around. I hit and I throw. But I always want to get, come back to that, to that combination. Jab, slip, body shot, button weave, hook cross, move around. And then I move and I work. Hook, boom, and I work. Boom, boom, and I work. And I work with jab, slip, body shot, power weave, and I come back to that combination over and over. Okay? So that's another way, another thing you can consider as you're doing your shadow boxing. If boxing is all you're doing. If you're kickboxing, same thing. You can go free each round and just you use your imagination and come up with what you're going to do on the fly as you're doing it. Or you can say, hey, you know what? I want to work on dealing with this particular type of situation in this round. Maybe the guy is aggressive and coming forward all the time, so I'm going to press my first round as though I'm fighting a guy who's pressing me. Maybe he's a runner. Oh, well, I want to fight a guy. I'm going to do this like a guy who's running away every time I try to attack him, so I'm going to cut him off. And I'm going to cut the ring off and, and work my combinations, the combinations that make sense to that situation. Or, in the last round, well, I'll put everything together and just freelance it. 
Okay, so that's one way of looking at doing uh, your first set. Okay, round one, round two, round three. Okay. Uh, another way you can look at it is, oh, well, I'm kickboxing, but you know what? First round, I'm just going to work on my boxing skills. Second round, you know what? I'm just going to work on my kicking skills. Work on my kicking combinations. Off. Just work on my kicking combinations. Uh, for the second round. And third round, I'm going to put my hands and my feet together. So that's another way you can approach it. In terms of shadow boxing and building up your skill. Muay Thai, same thing. Muay Thai, you can say, okay, I'm just going to freelance it for all, all three rounds. Or you might say, you know what? Round one, I'm going to work on boxing skills only. Round two, I'm going to work on boxing and kicking skills only. So I'm going to punch and work my kicks in the second round. Boy. Round three, I'm going to work primarily on my end fighting, my clinch game. So now I'm going to work my knees, oy, and my elbows, oy, oh, oy, 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 oy. Okay, so maybe you do that. All right, or again, you can think of a situation you had in sparring. I was always getting caught with his cross. So how am I going to deal with his cross the next time he throws it? So I jam and throw the cross, I slip, I body shot, and I right kick. And maybe that's what I'm gonna do. So your shadow boxing, your Muay Thai, first round, you slip, body shot, kick, and back. Back, back, oh, back, catch. Jab, slip, body shot, boom. And maybe you work on a specific uh, counter-offensive skill round one, another counter-offensive skill round two, Another counter-offensive skill round three. So you're getting the idea. You can just freelance it every round, or you can focus on a specific skill or technique each round, and so build your overall skill set. One of the other things I like to say is there's two ways you can ideally look at shadow boxing. Both of them require your imagination because that's the one of the biggest tools you have. You have to bring your opponent to life in front of you. So you have to be seeing someone attacking and counter-attacking you. So it's just not just standing up there and going through motion technique. Ugh. You gotta be using your imagination to see the person hitting back and how you're gonna counter them and they hit back and what you what are you gonna do. So you really have to really Bring your imagination into play. All right, the greater your imagination, the more you're going to get out of your workout. But additionally, you also want to maintain your intensity. So, one of the things you can do, yes, you can shut a box nice and smooth and slow for precision, but the challenge is that's not how you're going to fight. You're not going to fight in slow motion. So although doing the motion slow and smooth is good for developing your form and your grace as you execute your techniques, um, slow motion is not the way you fight. And you know, we have that saying, how you train is how you fight. So one of the things that Adjan Brandova um, said uh, a while ago when I, when I was attending um, the Oregon camp, with him is that you should shadow box the way you're going to fight. So, not locking your joint up to hurt yourself, but when you move, you should move with the same with the same intensity that you would have if you were actually in the ring fighting an opponent. And I've taken that to heart personally, and that is what I like to do as I'm shadow boxing. Always try to, yes, sometimes I'll do it nice and slow and smooth, yeah, develop my form and my grace, but then I also make sure that I do it with fighting intensity. So that's how you want to look at the shadow boxing element of this workout. Uh, one other thing that in the shadow boxing portion of it, as you're shadow boxing, you can shadow box to build your speed 
and you can also shadow box it, spill to your power. And you can do that by introducing the hand weights to your workout. So, I have three different weights. I think this is maybe one, two, and three pounds. They're kind of rubbed off, so I don't remember. I have some others that are kilo, kilograms. But uh, these are three weights. They're not too heavy. Not so heavy that if I go with an intense and I shoot, that I'm going to um, give myself tennis elbow and jar my joint. So they're heavy enough that I can to use them, but not so heavy that I can damage myself in the practice. And what I want to do, I think of this round one, round two, round three. So depends on what I want to work on on that day. Do I want to work on my power or my speed strength, or do I just want to work on my speed? Do I want to work on my speed endurance? Do I want to work on my strength endurance? And that will influence how I execute with the weight during my shadow boxing. Now let's say I want to work on my speed. Then what I would do is I start with the lightest of the weight and I shadow box as fast as I can with that lighter weight in my hand. work that lighter weight. Then I go to the next weight in the next round, in the second round, I go to the heavier weight. And my goal with these weights is to move my hand as quickly as I did when I had the previous weights in my hand. So I don't want to slow down with it. I want to be as quick with these weights in my hand as I, as I was in the previous round. Then in round three, I want to go with the heavier weight again and I still want to be as quick with these weights in my hand as I was with the weight previously, okay? Now that would be round one, two, three. Now generally if I'm doing a three round set, I always add a fourth round at the end. And that is the shadow box. That fourth round is just the shadow box with no weight in my hand. And my hand should be moving even faster now than before because I don't have the weight in my hand to slow me down. And so that's how we work on the speed. So we go from lighter to heavier to heavier weight to no weight and shallow box. So that's the extra round we put at the end of that three round set. If I'm doing nine rounds, then I would add a 10th round, which would be shallow boxing with no weight in my hand. If I were doing 15 rounds, I would finish with a 16th round of shadow boxing with no weight in my hand. And that's generally how we should be structured. Three rounds, nine rounds, sorry, I should put it this way. Uh, four rounds, 10 rounds, 16 rounds. And depending on the level of athlete you are, you are either gonna do a minimum of four rounds, or a minimum of 10 rounds, or a minimum of 16 rounds which prepares you for a three round bout or a five round bout. If you are a um, C or D class athlete, basically a novice, then you want to be doing anywhere from four to seven rounds, ideally four to 10 rounds. If you're an elite athlete, you should be doing 10 to 16 rounds. Okay. That will be your cardiovascular workout for the day. Now, the last thing is the calisthenics. So the calisthenics, as we said before, is set into 30 second intervals, six 30 second intervals. And what you want to do here again, as I remember, as I said, 
is to try to maintain the intensity the intensity so challenge yourself but don't overextend yourself by that i mean if you are doing let's say uh three sets right which means you're doing um three sets would be 10 rounds okay three rounds the first set three rounds the second set uh four rounds the last set then you don't want to go hard in the first set and peter out in the second and the third set because essentially you're not going to last the fight that's like doing really going really hard in the first round of the fight but then you have nothing left in the gas tank in the second and third round so you don't want to over challenge yourself in the first round and then can't maintain in the second and third so you want to pace yourself okay and ideally you want to log your performance how many squats did i do in the first round how many push-ups did i do how many sit-ups did i do and so on and then you want to try to maintain that level or improve on that level the next set okay so that's that's the idea in terms of your performance now doing the technique well is better is more important than how many you do okay um, at a certain level just being fit is is beneficial but being skillful is even more beneficial so you want to make sure that when you're performing these, these drills, that you're executing the techniques well, okay? Um, in terms of the workout, the cat, there are six, six things you're going to do for the calisthenic round. Remember, it's six 30-second intervals. So the first interval is the four-point burpee. The second interval is what we call the boxer's push-up. This is a push-up where you keep your elbows close to your body just like you would if you were fighting and then punching you don't want to flap your wings so we want to do the push-ups with the elbows close to the body um, the third round is the tricep dip we were working the dipping and working the triceps the third is the V sit up and there are two versions of that uh, well actually there are three versions of that that you can do um, the bicycle is after that and then the hyper extensions Uh, let me reset for a second and go back to the shadow boxing concept because I talked about shadow boxing for speed, but I didn't uh, address shadow boxing for power. If you're going to shadow box for power, you just reverse the process that you did for speed. So what you do is you start with the heaviest of the weights and you shadow box with that weight. You want to feel that heaviness at the end of your punch. When you, there's a there's a, a kind of a pull you feel on the body when you throw uh, the, with the, the the punch with the weight in it because there's that little snap at the end, just like a whip. That when the whip straightens, there's that crack. There's that little pull on the body when you throw um, the weight with the hand. Okay, and so even you shot a box, you want to really put your body and feel the weightiness of the punch. And once you have that, then you go to the, the lighter weight and you shadow box again. But you want to feel that same heaviness in the punch as you had, as you did when you were throwing the previous punch with the weight, with heavier weight. Okay? So the same feel that you had with the heavier weight, you want to have with this weight in your hand. And then when you go to the lighter weight, the same thing. When you throw the lighter weight, you just want to feel that same pull and heaviness in the punch um, as when you had the heaviest weight so that by the time you get to the fourth round or your final round it can be the fourth round or the tenth round or the sixteenth round you want even without the weight in your hand you still want to feel that heaviness in your punch and that's how you work on improving your power as you're shot boxing with the weight so let's uh, go back now to the discussion we're having on the calisthenics. So the four-point burpee, the emphasis of the four-point burpee is to work on the explosiveness in the legs. Okay, so we're not as concerned with the upper building the upper body with the four-point burpee as we are with the lower body. So for this, it's a four-point burpee because there are four motions or actions in what we're doing. The first 
is that we're going to squat down and place our hand on the mat. Second, we're going to extend our feet out together, so we're in that push-up position. The third, we're going to pop in, bringing the knees to the elbow. Notice the butt is down. And then, the fourth, we're going to explode up the truck and imagine we're going to touch the roof. And that explosiveness up is what we really want to emphasize so that we're building the quads, getting really strong quads in the action of what we're doing. Okay, so I'm just going to do like five reps for you. Um, again, you want to, to note how many reps you can get in that 30 seconds and constantly try to improve on it. Okay. If you don't have a mat in the floor, as I have the benefit of, you want to have your mat down and use that to cushion the surface you've been operating on. For the push-up, we're focusing on the shoulder and tricep action. We really want to work on that extension of the arm to twist for the punch, just like you would want when you're punching. Again, we don't want to flap the elbows to punch because we're exposing the body. So we want to keep the elbows close to the body as we do this push-up. So, two ways you can start. You can do this with your fingers pointing forward. Some people have a problem with this, allowing the elbow to go back. But you really want to go down with the elbow right by your side and up. Again, keeping your body elevated, straight, your ears in line with your shoulders. Alright, um, but if you have a problem doing it with your fingers pointing forward, you can actually turn your fingers out so the elbows turn back more naturally and you can do it. You can do it like that. If you want to be more challenging to yourself, then you can do it on the knuckles. And put the knuckles down. And this will help you get a good formation of your hand for your punching. And you can do the push-ups on the knuckles. On the side view, one thing you want to make sure of, well, two things. One, that you're not dropping your head when you do the push-up. That's one. Two, very importantly, that you're, when you're doing your push-up, that your wrist are directly under your shoulder until you go down. So as you come up, you have a straight L shape on the wrist. You don't want a situation where you're leaning too far forward and putting pressure unnecessarily on the wrist. Okay? And the third thing, you want to keep your torso straight, but slightly elevated. You want to avoid sagging your hips as you go down. So you want to keep your body up. For males, you want to go three inches before you reach the floor. This is the three inches from the floor. Females, five inches from the floor. Okay? So guys, you want to get your chest three inches as close, three inches to the floor and up. Females, five inches and up. Okay? So that's the form you want to have for your push-ups. And again, you're going to be able to do as many of those as you can in 30 seconds. Next are the dips. For the dips, fingertips pointing in the same direction as your feet, tabletop position, which means your your hands and feet make the four legs of the table and your body forms a straight line as flat as possible to the floor. 
Then you bend your elbows and push yourself up. You can also extend your feet out more and do it with your feet extended. You are working primarily your tricep muscles. Okay? And that is what you want as far as the hips are concerned. Next are the V-ups. That will be your next exercise. The first way you can do the V-up is to have your hands by your hips. Extend your body and your feet. Your feet are elevated about 12 inches off the floor. Your body is inclined at about 60 degrees. Then you come in, bring the knees and the chest together and out. That's the first version. Second version of the via is to have the hands off the floor. So you're extended, come in and out, in and out, in and out. Okay, excuse me. That's the second version. The third version, and I would admit readily that this is not my best exercise. You do it in the jackknife version. So you're on your back and you come up and bring your hands and feet to the center, meeting in the center of the body. So those are three variations of the V sit up. Some people call it a jackknife sit up. The bicycle. Okay, so we're on our backs, hands are by the ears, we're not going to put the hands on the back of the head where we put strain on the neck as we do the exercise. We want to have the hands by the ears, one leg extended, one leg bent, and then we alternate, bringing the opposite elbow to the knee. six exercises in our cardiovascular round, 30 second intervals. We start working the legs with the burpee, then we go to the arms, then we go to the core, working the abdominal and the back muscles. Okay? And as I said, then you want to get that up to your, into your sets. So I'll be detailing this for you in the video tutorial okay so once you have that you set your timer and you go through the process skip first for three minutes shadow box for three minutes calisthenics for three minutes okay and once you've done that set rest for three minutes repeat do another set, rest for three minutes, and repeat, but add the fourth round of shadow boxing at the end where you're no weight in the hand and you're just going free in that final round. Okay, and again, your shadow boxing, you can shadow box for boxing only, you can shadow box for kickboxing only, you can shadow box for Muay Thai, you can even shadow box for MMA, just add 
your takedown, your takedown defenses to your shadow boxing. All right, uh, I'm going to do a little set to give you a bit more uh, idea of what it will look like. And then all you have to do, set your timer, set your goals, and go at it. Okay? All right, guys. I hope you enjoy your workout sessions. Okay? Um, by the way, if you do this workout two, three times a week, you're going to see significant progress in your cardiovascular fitness. You're going to see significant progress in your speed and or power, depending on what you emphasize. Now, if you're doing the extended rounds, if you're doing like 16 rounds, you can work on developing the form, the first uh, three sets, right? Um, then you can do the speed, the next three sets, doing working speed for the next three sets. You can work power for the next three sets. And then you can go back to just going free, no weight in your hand um, for the next three sets. Always finish free. Okay, anytime you're doing uh, shadow boxing, anytime you're training for martial art, you don't want to finish on the power training. Always go back to finish on the speed training. Okay, because power training tends to slow you down. And so you don't want to finish um, power hitting on the heavy bag. You don't want to do uh, heavy weight at the end of your workout. You always want to go back to the lightweight training and the speed training at the end. That way you don't get sluggish. Okay? All right. Uh, I'm just going to do uh, or a set right now um, so you get to see uh, at least the beginning of a set so you get to see what that is like and uh, I hope you enjoy this workout and feel free to use it to your fullest.
When you're doing your calisthenic round, um, the 30 second intervals, you want to make sure that you transition smoothly from one exercise to the other without too much of a break um, between the exercises. So you want a smooth transition. I'm going to demonstrate that for you going from one exercise to the other smoothly. Uh, I'll probably do about 5-10 reps of each. But I don't want you to do one exercise, spend 10-15 seconds transitioning to the other exercise to then do the other exercise because then you're defeating the purpose of challenging yourself and maintaining your intensity. So please be mindful of that. Um, I know it's easy to fall into the complacency of just going through the motions. But you, if you want to be a successful athlete, you want to be a successful fighter, then you really got to challenge yourself. Okay? Okay, so that's how smoothly you want to transition from one exercise to the other during your calisthenic round. 